Harry's wife, be a visionary in your own life, copying again. We know Harry's wife has form for copying, mimicry and plagiarism. There was the suggestion that she plagiarised the bench of stench in relation to material written by another author. We regularly see the instances whereby she engages in the Diana duplication, copying the style and clothing that Diana, Princess of Wales, once wore. We know that she wore the same fragrance to one of her dates with Harry that was worn by Diana. There are instances of her copying the style and fashion of Catherine, Princess of Wales. There are many documented instances where she has taken sayings and quotations by other people and has passed them off as her own, either in terms of speeches or those fridge magnet platitudes that peppered the TIG when it was in operation. Harry's wife copies because her narcissism deems that it is appropriate for her to do so. Lacking boundary recognition, functioning with a sense of entitlement, having no accountability for her behaviours, and not caring about the fact that she's ripping off somebody else's work, her narcissism tells her that it's appropriate for her to behave this way. Indeed, she doesn't see that she's copying. She doesn't regard it as such. She believes that she is the one that has come up with all of these inspirational observations, that her fashion is of her own doing, because her narcissism tells her that that is the case. It's almost as if she sees something and thinks, oh, that's good, uses it, and the moment she uses it, her narcissism rewires her brain, rewriting history to delete that she saw it elsewhere, so that she believes that it was her own creation. Many narcissists behave this way because of the sense of entitlement, etc., that I've mentioned, but also because it's driven by the fact that the narcissist is essentially empty. There's nothing there. As I've explained to you so many times, and as was ably demonstrated so memorably by South Park when Harry flipped open his wife's head and looked inside to find that there was nothing in there, this means that as part of the creation of the construct that the outside world sees, the narcissist must engage in mimicry. I'd advise you to watch my videos The Mockery of Mimicry and also The Imitation Game to understand how the narcissist copies and the reasons why. Much of this copying goes on by way of character trait acquisition. Do watch the video of that name also to bolster your understanding. This all means that the narcissist takes from elsewhere and fashions subconsciously, where an unaware narcissist such as Harry's wife, this construct that is made from the doings and beings of other people. It is done to make the narcissist look good, to make it easier to control people, to draw fuel from them, and in some cases obtain residual benefits. In some instances, some narcissists are blatant in their plagiarism, taking other people's videos and passing them off as their own, taking other people's music and passing it off as their own, seizing somebody else's idea and writing a book about it and claiming that it was theirs. There are lots of instances where narcissists copy, not only in terms of the creation of the construct, but simply as a combination of a lack of imagination, ability, talent, and quite simply because they're lazy. Many narcissists do have talent, but there are a whole load more that do not. And the narcissism doesn't care about that. All it cares about is the prime aims. And if it can get to the prime aims very easily, by mimicry and copying and plagiarism, then so be it. And that's what Harry's wife does. Her narcissism, albeit not the laziest, certainly isn't the most industrious. And therefore it directs her along the easiest route that it can find. And she's at it again. Just recently she declared, be a visionary in your own life, and made it sound like this comment was something that she had created, but she hadn't. An individual called Janelle Ryan wrote a short article entitled How to Be a Visionary in Your Own Life, which was published on April 15th in 2019. It appears on her LinkedIn profile. Janelle Ryan describes herself as global personal coach, leadership coach, speaker, author, presenter, retreat facilitator, Certain descriptions that, of course, Harry's wife would apply to herself also. 
The article, short as it is, tells us as follows. When someone tells me they don't know what they want to do next with their life, I usually sit back in my chair, smile widely and say, yes, you do. Your being here on Earth is no accident. A lot had to happen for you to be born. Ask anyone who's been through the IVF process. I haven't, but many of my friends who have tell me that once you learn the intricacies of conception, it's a wonder any of us here are here at all. So many stars have to align. I've always believed, long before I was a coach, that we are all here for a reason. Are you a little fuzzy right now on what yours is? You are not alone. Remember when you were a child and the possibilities were endless. We wanted to be astronauts and superheroes. And our mum or dad and a lay-in tamer and a sports star, we really didn't give ourselves any limits. We knew, instinctively, we didn't have to. But sometimes, during our adventure into adulthood, we forget that we still have imagination. We still have dreams. We still have desires that burn inside of us. And those dreams are still possible. They may not come in their original packaging. They may not look exactly as you thought they would. They may be in a different format. But if they are right for you, they will feel just as exhilarating. If you have an idea, dream, desire, or vision that keeps coming up, pay attention. It's telling you something. If it's come from you, it's for you. This activity has been helpful for some of my clients creating their next chapter. So I wanted to share it here for you too. Here are my five steps to setting your very next vision. One, grab something to write on and with, with colored pens are great for this. Got kids? Feel free to raid their pencil cases. Two, write your first heading, vision. Three, now sit back in your chair and imagine fast forwarding to one year from today. Imagine you run into an old friend. Sometime, someone you enjoy seeing and conversing with because she really cares about you and your life. She is interested in you. She listens and she hears you. She applauds you. As you express your delight and surprise in your unexpected meeting, you realise it's been 12 months since you last saw each other. Life has certainly been busy. After a few beats, she asks the inevitable question, what are you up to these days? You decide not to wave the question away with a stock standard answer. You give her a real, authentic, and detailed reply. Why? Because your year has been incredible, and you want to share it with this person who is one of your biggest cheerleaders. Well, you tell her, my life couldn't be better. I am. Number four, grab your next coloured pen and fill in the gap. What are you describing to your friend? What is this amazing life like? Who are you with? How do you feel in your body and your mind? How are you creating income? Where is your business or career at? What are you doing socially? How are things with your family? Are you in love? Don't stop there. These are only suggestions. Tell her every single thing that you've created in your life in the past year. Let yourself dream, see the vision, feel the emotion. Five, hopefully this has taken you a little bit of time. And you now have a list of dreams and desires on your piece of paper. This is your vision. Sit back, absorb it, enjoy it, and now plan for it. Be your own visionary. So a short article there by an individual named Janelle Ryan entitled How to Be a Visionary in Your Own Life. Whether you believe in that or not is beside the point. The point is, the language of it is something that would appeal to Harry's wife. It occupies a world that she believes that she belongs to. But the main point is, here is someone who's described the term How to Be a Visionary in Your Own Life. Something that Harry's wife has come up with, but made it seem as if she is the original author of it. And of course, the existence of this article, freely available, and likely something that Harry's wife has come across, it's likely that driven by her narcissism, she's copied this and rolled it out as her own to make herself sound like she's some kind of global visionary, that she's some kind of pioneer, when once again we know that it's just the narcissism trying to mask the emptiness. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.